Well, a guy recently watched Smokey and the Bandit for the 93rd time and got inspired to build my own budget Burt Trans Am. So we need a 77 Trans Am T-top that's black. So we're here in Alabama where we found this not so 77 Trans Am. This one's blue and primer and a 79, not black, but it was a lot cheaper and it's something to work with. We're gonna try to transform this into something unique and similar and try to do it on a budget. But first we gotta get 150 miles back to my shop. This is the first time I'm seeing it in person. So just walk around it, see what we got. So this is a pretty unique color. I think it's Atlas blue or something like that. You don't see a lot of them. Front clip's been replaced or something like that, but I don't know. It looks to be fairly solid. We're missing some things. We do have some black bandit plastic pieces on here. It is a T-top, which is a winning formula for any sort of Burt tribute. Again, though, this is a, this is a 79, not a 77, but you could save a lot of money by getting the wrong ear. Did have some pin stripage. We've got the typical speed holes. That one might be for drifting. It's a pretty good fist size, but the plastic almost covers it up. These are anniversary wheels. Now we're pretty slick. And we got some integrity tires. I don't know, they're round. Aha. Okay. We'll ignore all the rust in the deck lid. We got a lot of it's plastic and trim parts and plastic. Some assembly required, I guess. We got floppage. Does it not even have a doesn't even have a latch? Woo! We got completage. Some sort of some sort of engine in the engine bay. There's all the ingredients for a successful air conditioning system. It's got a new fuel pump make it happener on it. That's pretty cool. I mean, I think it's all here. We might have a pretty good shot of this thing actually running. But before we dive into this, I gotta get inside this thing. See if we actually have a steering wheel and things needed to start the car. Yeah. Yeah. It smells like a wet shoebox full of alligator feet and red onion. It's not good. Whoa. Both seats are laid back in Tupac mode, and I think they're they're just broke that way. This one does already have a stern wheel. That's good. Shifter seems to shift things. Looks like we are gonna need all that plastic because there's none plastics in the car, pretty much whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, it's, you get what you pay for. You can Flintstone the rear. Big old hole back here. That's nice. And a window crank. Well, I think a guy's gonna strip all this down, take a look at the fuel making happener, see what our mystery engine is. Then we can throw a lightning cube in here and just test all the electrical system, make sure the ignition works, the starter's actually hooked up and doing starter things and stuff like that. It looks like everything's pretty well plumbed in. The casting number down here on the block, 396021F. The interwebs tells us that that's a 455 engine from 68 to 72, and they ranged in a lot of horsepowers, but that's actually pretty unique and pretty cool because this thing should have a lot of torques. Why I got swapped in here, I have no idea, but that's great news, actually. Put the sad cable on. <clears throat> Nothing sparkled yet. Fasten belts, brake light, and contact. Rotates. 
She's got a gallop in it, though. Listen. One cylinder compression is not like the other. We can probably bring that around with a couple dozen burnouts. Let them rings reseat. None of the gauges work. Fuel gauge says 48 gallons past full. So that's, that's what you want on a long road trip. Perfect. Well, now that we know this thing rotates, that's great news, but I'm gonna check all the fluids in this thing before we try to fire it up, just to make sure we got all the juices in it. Oh yeah, it's actually over full. Not bad. We can run it on that for a little while anyway. It does have a bunch of gasoline in it, so we'll wanna drop that eventually. Make sure we got something on the blood stick. Oh yeah. Two things, I need a sinus pill and it doesn't smell too bad. There's something in there so we won't burn the pump out anyway. So I'm gonna dump some Firemaker down the yap, some gasoline in it, to see if this thing at least makes some noise. Bring in the thunders. It fired. There it goes. Oil pressure is still nothing on the gauge, but I think the gauge is busted. It's running. Motor mounts are shot. <laughs> it's been a long time since something just actually ran as advertised, I'll tell you that. It's got a little bit of a miss to it, but could be timing, could be spark lighters. Okay, we get it. I got stuff to do. All right, I'm just gonna shut it off because it definitely runs. Well, that's fantastic news now. I'm gonna drop the oil on this bad boy and change that out quick, I think. We could check the ice cube juice and the water boiler up front. It probably doesn't have brakes because the rears are just completely disconnected. We're actually at the top of like a mountain right now. And the very first thing we do when we take a left is drop like 74 million feet in elevation right into a small town four-way flashing red light. So I'd kind of like to have brakes for once. That'd be nice. So a guy slid his retinas under the front of the car here, and unfortunately, the cross member has been completely ripped, split, cracked, broken. Thankfully, someone stick welded it with their eyes closed. It seems to have repaired it. No, and there's still a crack above that. Meaning the lower control arm on the drinker side of this vehicle is about ready to tear off, and nothing is true, straight, or correct in any of the steering and or alignment. But since it's a tribute replica of Burt car, means we can jump it now, too. We don't have to feel bad about it. <laughs> nice. Well, I'm gonna test the transmission, make sure we actually have gearage, and then I'll jam the old earth pounder on the brake pedal and see if it's actually gonna stop. All right, reverse. There it goes. Neutral drive. Yep. Throw a little bit of timing in it. I could hear that it was lazy. So I used the ear meter there. Throw this air cleaner back on. And we got 150 miles back to Vice Grip Garage in the pole barn. Car runs. Halfway decent-ish. Put a little timing in it, dolled up the fuel pump area over there, threw a battery in it, changed the oil, threw some juice in the shift machine, and I'm not even gonna look at the rest. I'm gonna jump in and just hit the road and see what happens. Okay. Foot hard on the pedal. Never mind the brakes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, it's a start. I've never driven a Trans Am from the back seat before. It's it's a much different experience, for sure. 
Oh boy, these brakes need a lot of work. At least we're not going down 78,000 million feet. Well, the guy's posted up behind a parts store here. Pretty good spot, I gotta say. Now we're in the alley, it's not very good. I got some things I need to address before we hit the road. B, that tire, that needs fixed. Number four, it's already overheating. And A, I'm not getting fuel from the fuel tank. It's gonna be a pickup screen that's plugged. The pickup screen or tube is just rotted or missing. I just ain't got the time right now. So I'm gonna do the right thing. Just swing a hose under here, throw it into the passenger seat, jam that into a fuel jug. Pick up an overflow for this. Might pick up a bottle of head gaskets and a can, just in case. Get some used rubber on it, and then we're gonna hit the road again. At least that's what I'm saying the plan is. So if you remember, a guy's having fuel delivery issues, not only with the pump issues up front, but we have something going on in the tank and the lines to the front. And that's really common when cars sit this long. The pickup screens get plugged. These get full of rust and rot. So we're just gonna replace the whole tank, the sending unit, and however much of the line we need to so we can get fuel up to the front. We're gonna need that consistent pressure if we're gonna be putting 100 shot of nitrous on this thing. So I've got the fuel tank, fuel sending unit, and fuel line in. I'm moving on to the cross member here. This front subframe is shot. It's not only twisted and bent, but as you can see, it was expertly repaired. We discovered that before we left Alabama. We noticed when we got back in the shop this morning that this weld had actually parted C's. It was about an eighth inch gap, and then we've got a fresh crack up here as well. So what I did was I lifted the car with the center point right here, let the weight of the A-arms, the springs, and the tires and wheels essentially kind of sag, and it pulled this together. Now I've got the job of trying to get all of that snot weld off of there, clean it up, and then I'm gonna put new snot welds back in, but maybe this time both sides will touch. There is how we're gonna add horsepower. We've got a fuel solenoid up here. We've got a nitrous solenoid back here. Out with the Quadrajet, in with this Brawler Street Series. This is a 650 CFM vacuum secondaries electric choke unit. And this is a power shot system by NOS. So basically, we're gonna press a button. This comes preset at 125 horsepower shot. It's a lot of nitrous for this engine. 
but it's what we got, and it's gonna be pretty fun. I've just gotta tie the fuel in here. We need to run the nitrous oxide line back to the trunk. We're gonna mount the tank back there. We've already got that full. There's brackets that come in the kit and everything like that. And then we've just gotta wire in these solenoids, so they're both gonna fire off at the same time when I hit that blue button. We're gonna roll it outside into our professional bake and paint booth to lay down some paint. And of course, by professional paint booth, I mean this pop-up stick garage thing. <laughs> That'll work just fine. Gonna jam a fan on one side, one on the other here, and just start fogging this thing down. But instead of doing a gloss black, we're wanting to hide all of the pinholes and rust and rot and dents and dings and bondo and bent stuff. And I've always wanted to do a satin black with shiny decals, and that's exactly what we're gonna do. This thing is gonna look awesome. We're gonna do four coats, satin black. As soon as that dries, fresh decals. Even though this isn't a real paint job, it's nice to go through the steps and kind of perform that practice or that muscle memory. So we've washed this down with soap and water. After we taped it, we went ahead and wiped it down again with the paint prep, or you can use Earth Ghost Juice or whatever you wanna use after that. At this point, we're just gonna use a cheap $35 HBLP gun. We've got some off-brand paint. We have to hurry, we're outdoors, a thunderstorm is knocking on our doors, and the humidity is gonna get something fierce. We're gonna start with the bare metal. I wanna build that up since there's so many different layers of paint and primer on here. We're gonna do the bare metal first, then we'll come over and lay two to three medium coats, and then one heavy coat, hopefully. Well, with a little bit of elbow grease and time, the Budget Bandit is all black. This should dry to a nice satin or matte finish here overnight. Then we'll see how this thing performs to the legendary Bandit. We're gonna be sliding this around, and I guarantee you I'm gonna use all of that nitrous. We'll see you tomorrow. I see what this bird's got. Mosmobile 455 will in fact take 125 shot of nitrous, bone stock with exhaust, and a Holley carburetor. That's pretty awesome. What a good car.